Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if you can hear the drum beat. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, I got something. Now, I testified of a vision. Oops. Of a vision I saw a while back. I'll put a link in the description. And then I bought these shoes because they were uh, slides. But this is what... Okay, so in the vision I saw the throne of God... And in the vision, I saw big, giant, immensely tall columns of gold. And um, the base of the throne was, was completely covered in a cloud. And you should watch the whole video of the uh, vision that I had. But I ordered these online and didn't really know what I was getting. I just wanted a pair of... Uh, these are actually um, Adidas... Uh, um, slides that have the uh, boost and I I actually ever since I bought my first pair of shoes uh, Adidas shoes with boost I've been bo boost is really good uh, it's like this puffy stuff anyway I just found the the cheapest slide that was online and I bought it that was boost Adidas boost and then when it arrived in the mail I looked at it, and this is what I saw. Okay, now in the vision, I saw the gold columns, and at the base of the gold columns, on the throne of God. Okay, um, I remember I, it's white, perfectly white, but there's a there's a um, a rainbow colored reflection. Okay, and when I looked at these, these are perfect. This is exactly what it looked like, you guys. Literally. Imagine this part right here is being perfectly white like this, but having this kind of reflection from, see how this is like, um, it's almost like purplish, and right now it's reflecting an orangish color, and it looks kind of like a sunrise or sunset color. This is what, this is what the throne of God, the, the base of his throne looks like this, with the reflection that looks like this. It's kind of like abalone. And whatever light is around. Okay, so it's perfectly white. But it reflects. Now notice how it's reflecting light differently here. Because there's red from my iPhone. That's actually the, the, um, the little um, stop start button is red. And it's reflecting red right here. And this right here. Now I pointed up here. That's reflecting the lights from the other room. So it reflects this light. The throne of God, what I saw, where the foundation was. Anyway. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Now that song's been just coming up in my spirit. 
just all day long, everywhere I go, I'm riding my little scooter around, getting like 120 miles to the gallon, 130 miles to the gallon, and I'm riding along, got my helmet on, and I'm thinking, hallelujah. I'm at a stoplight, come on and bless the Lord with me. I'm in the grocery store at the Walmart, come on and bless the Lord with me. I'm at the library, hallelujah. And I feel this drum beat everywhere I go. Like there's a procession of angels following me around with bump, 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 bump. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Bump, 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 bump. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> okay, so now I said in a previous video that the Lord spoke to me about like Kenneth Copeland, Jesse Duplantis, Ronnie Howard Brown, and that um, they are the ones who are going to fulfill the scripture of Matthew 7.21. Now, let's go there real quick. I wasn't really planning on talking about this, but let's do it. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a close look at this because it's scary and it should scare you. The Lord told me everybody who's t turned aside for, for money, riches, and wealth and the, uh, will be condemned. And the Bible talks about how people wanting to get rich have wandered away from the faith. And the Lord was speaking to me about this yesterday. What's it mean to wander away from the faith? It's a slow process. You don't just suddenly fall away. But slowly over time, you become a little bit lukewarm every week, every month. And two years later, you're lukewarm. Five years later, you're lukewarm. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. So let's look at this. Matthew. Seven. <laughs> Check out my thumbs. <laughs> Come on and bless the Lord with me. See the body of Christ? I think right now I'm just the thumbs. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Look at they're rejoicing. Hallelujah. Dance unto the Lord. Yay! I'm the thumb. That's all I am is a thumb in the body of Christ. What do you use your thumb for? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> if you need a ride somewhere. Hallelujah. And that's true. The Lord has used me to give people. I've been everybody's uh, Uber. <laughs> I have been. Give people a free ride. I'm going to get to Matthew eventually. I'm in Mark right now, going backward. Matthew 7, Matthew 10, Matthew... Matthew! All right. 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Now listen, it says many will say to me on that day. We're going we're gonna to go over this again. Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoer. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus said many are called, few are chosen. And look at this. Let's go over it again. Now when he says the kingdom of heaven, 
Well, these people carried the kingdom of God because it look at what it says. He says, many will say to me on that day. So when he's referring to the kingdom of heaven, he's talking about a certain day when they stand before God and it's finally revealed to them that they didn't make it. And they're going to be surprised. And they're going to say, but Lord, this doesn't make any sense. In your name we prophesied. So they had the gift of prophecy. In your name we drove out demons. So they had power and authority over demons. In your name we performed many miracles. Not just one or two miracles, but they didn't just say, well, this one time there was a miracle in my ministry. No, it says many miracles, probably too many miracles to describe. And then I will tell them plainly. Has anybody ever had somebody around you that you didn't like, but you were friendly to them, but you just, you knew there's something wrong with this person, or, or, or maybe... In other words, you were, you're polite, you're friendly, and they thought you were best buddies. I, I've had people use me deceitfully in my past. An example is this one time I was renting a room in a house. And uh, in another room was this girl. And this was like in a college type of situation. And she didn't have a car. I had a car. And she started to ask me for a ride to go here and there. And so I was just friendly, being polite, you know? And so I was like, sure, I'll give you a ride. But eventually, after like a week of driving her around, she never gave me gas money. She acted like, especially after a few days of really doing what she needed as far as driving her around, she acted like I was supposed to do that. Like she just took it for granted. And I remember thinking, you know what? I'm not into this friendship anymore, you know, but I was still polite to her and nice to her. And I remember one day I, I told her, nope, I got to go to work. That was the other thing is I was changing my schedule to drive her around. And no, she wasn't a girlfriend. And no, I wasn't like living with her in any, like it was a room for rent. Okay. Situation. Um, but it's like it got to a point where I didn't I didn't like her. I felt like I was being used. And then when I when I told her no, I, I'm not driving, I'm not I'm not taking you anywhere. She got mad. But I finally told her plainly, nope, I'm done. And so these people deceitfully used the Lord to get everything they wanted. I'm just saying. Now, what scripture does this relate to? It relates to the weeds among the wheat. Now, the same thing happens to the, the foolish virgins and the weeds among the wheat. Let's go to Matthew 25. Well, let's start at Matthew 13. Because that's just a few pages over. Now, you got to read the whole chapter of Matthew 13. But I'll just start at uh, verse 37 through 41. 31, 33, 34. Okay. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds. Now, the parable of the weeds starts in Matthew 13, verse 1. Okay? And Jesus talks about the weeds and how... Um, but, but now he gives an explanation to his disciples separate from the crowd. So now he's sitting down with the few to explain what happens to the many. Remember, many are called, few are chosen. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, in your name we did this, in your name we did that. Are you ready? He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. The harvesters are the angels. 
As weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. Now, wait a minute. Some people are going to say, Sonny boy, that's referring to the world and the people of the world. No, it doesn't. It says they will that, that the angels of God will be sent out, and they will weed out of his kingdom. All who cause sin and who do evil, they will throw them into the fire furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun. Wait a minute, there's one part that I'm missing. I'm going back. Oh, so let's go back and look at what Jesus said. Revelation 13, verse 3. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. So that's not people who were part of God's kingdom. That's not people who were uh, out um, prophesying in Jesus' name and driving out demons in Jesus' name. It sprang up quickly, but because it had no... So uh, um, birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but because the soil was shallow, or because the soil, soil, Lord help me. But when the sun came up, the, pl the plants were scorched and they were withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, and thirty times what was sown. He who has an ear, let him hear. Okay, so here's what's important. Some falls among the weeds, and the weeds choke it out. What are those weeds trying to do to the true children of God? They're trying to choke you out. Um, now, there's another parable. That was the parable of the sower, but the parable of the weeds... Here it is, Matthew 24, or 13, 24. The kingdom of heaven, not the world, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, other versions of the Bible say came to maturity, okay, Then the weeds also appeared, okay? The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, did we not sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? Jesus says, or, or he replied, an enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat. Let them both grow together until the harvest. In other words, you got the weeds among the wheat, you got the many, and then you got the wheat, the few, and they're growing up together, okay? Until the harvest. And the same thing happens to the foolish virgins. Look at this. So, so they're all growing up together. And at the very last moment, the weeds are separated and thrown into fire. Go to Matthew 25. Same thing happens to the foolish virgins. They're all together, and at the very last moment, the, vir the foolish ones fall away. Matthew 25, verse 1. At that time. When is at that time? Jesus is talking about the end of the age in Matthew 24. So he's talking about the very end of the age. At that time. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps, went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them are foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps, the foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. 
No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others came also. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I do not know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Okay. When Jesus said you do not know the day or the hour, he was talking about the day, the day of Christ and our being gathered to him, and the hour, the hour of God's judgment. And both of them are found right here. Okay, are you ready? At midnight, the cry rings out. You know what that midnight is? That's the midnight hour. That's the midnight doomsday nuclear war. At midnight, at the end of the age, there's coming a nuclear war where the stars fall from the sky and the sky is rolled up like a scroll. And that's a mushroom cloud. And if you know anything about mushroom clouds, when there's a nuclear detonation, the heat is so intense that it starts to rise and it rises up and, the, and the, there's a, what's called turbulence that sucks up into the atmosphere and it rolls up like a scroll. Okay. At midnight, the cry rings out. That's the hour of God's judgment. Here comes the bridegroom. What's that cry? The same cry that we hear, that uh, the stars fall from the sky, and the sky is rolled up like a, like a scroll. Matthew 25 says, The sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the sign of the, sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all nations of the earth will mourn. Now look at Ma look at Revelation. Uh, what I'm telling you is the cry that rings out at midnight is the, the midnight hour of God's judgment. Now let's look at Revelation chapter 6. Are you, are you ready? At midnight. I watched as he opened the sixth seal and there was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red and the stars in the sky fell to the earth like late figs dropped from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The sky receded like a scroll rolling up. Every mountain and island was moved from, it from its place and all the kings of the earth and princes and generals, the rich, the mighty, the slaves and the free, every man hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains and they called to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us, hide us from him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. So in Matthew 24, he says, the stars will fall from the sky, the heavenly bodies will be shaken and the sign in the sky of the coming of the Son of Man will be seen and all nations will mourn. In Revelation, it says the stars fall from the sky. But instead of saying the sign in the sky and the coming Son of Man, it says the sky is rolled up like a scroll. So we can say that the one and the same, the sky rolled up like a scroll is the one and the same as the sign in the sky of the coming of the Son of Man. And when all nations mourn, it's one and the same as when the rich and the, and the mighty and the generals are hiding in the dens of the rocks and the caves of the mountains. These are bomb shelters and fallout shelters. And at the end of it, there's a time of no wind. And if you continue in the book of Revelation, it describes a nuclear winter. So in the, in the parable of the ten virgins, we see the hour of God's judgment. The hour of God's judgment is nuclear war. Nuclear war lasts one hour. It's called the hour of God's judgment. It's the hour that Babylon the Great falls. It's the hour of trial to come upon the whole earth. Revelation 3.10. It's the hour that the beast comes to power. Revelation 17.12 says the ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but receive authority as kings one hour along with the beast. Now, most versions of the Bible will say for one hour. But if you look at the Greek, it doesn't say for one hour. And if you look at the word hour, you're going to find that there's an hour of trial that comes upon the whole earth. 
There's an hour of God's judgment, which Babylon the Great falls in one hour. And then you're going to find that the beast comes to power and they receive authority as kings one hour along with the beast. That's nuclear war. When nuclear war happens, I guarantee you the, the nukes will fall from the sky. And you know what a nuke is? These modern nukes are called thermonuclear. They're called nuclear. They use nuclear fission to create nuclear fusion. And nuclear fusion is the exact same chemical reaction that we see in the stars that cause the stars to give their light and the sun. So calling a nuke the stars is, is basically saying the same exact chemical reaction right here on the earth. And it's also the glory of God because it's his power. See, God contains that power in the sun and it's, the sun is 93 million miles away. But what happens when a nuke is detonated five miles away, 10 miles away? Just saying. So what I'm saying is this nuclear war is going to happen. And at that time, all the Christians are going to wake up and realize it's not a pre-tribulation rapture. And then there's going to be a great falling away. Remember, Paul said that. To, okay, now let, look, Jesus said, um, remember I said, therefore keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Well, the hour is the hour of God's judgment of Revelation uh, 14, verse 7, 8, and 9. It's also the hour that Babylon the Great falls. But the day is the day of Christ and our being gathered to him. And in the parable of the ten virgins, look what it says. Later the others came also and said, and uh, they said, open the door for us. That represents the rapture. That's Matthew 25 verse 11. So in Matthew chapter 25, we see the hour of God's judgment, the hour at verse 6. And then at verse 11, we see, um, actually verse 10, uh, while they were on their way, the bridegroom arrived. That represents the rapture. And the virgins who were ready went in to the wedding banquet with him. That represents the rapture. And then it says, later the others came also and said, sir, sir, open the door for us. See, it's not once saved, always saved. And the, all these same foolish virgins, they suddenly realize we didn't make it. And these are the same foolish virgins that while they're saying, Lord, open the door for us, open the door for us. You know what he's going to say? He's going to say, depart from me, for I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. And then you know what they're going to say? Lord, in your name, we drove out demons and we did miracles. And he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. And this is all those love of money. Every Christian who's turned aside for the love of money. And they're handed over to a power for delusion to believe a lie. And right now they're all growing up together. And the weeds are trying to choke out the wheat. And the foolish virgins, it doesn't say it here. But I guarantee you the wise and the foolish virgins are all in the same place together. Because look, the wise, however, took oils and jars in their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming. That tells you it's not a pre-trib rapture. And they became drowsy and they all fell asleep. You know, the body of Christ, the church is asleep right now. Especially in the United States. At midnight, a cry rings out. What's that mean, a cry? Well, when nuclear war happens, there's going to be a lot of people calling out and crying and screaming and cry. cry. Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. What's that mean? That means suddenly you, you, uh, the veil that is on those who are truly chosen of God is re they're released to shine brightly for the Lord. You can expect a great increase in the power of God in your life and ministry when nuclear war, after nuclear war happens and everybody's running around freaking out and you're the one who comes walking up saying, peace. God's been preparing me this, for this my whole life. And then the miracles start coming out of you. I'm talking about you. Because you're ready. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and bless. 
the Lord with me. Thus says the Lord. This is what the Lord said. He said money, riches, and wealth stunts your spiritual growth and can even reverse your spiritual growth. That's why they became rich in this world. And James said, you rich, you should take pride in your low position. And he said, but you have insulted the poor. And he said, he said, it is, has not God chosen the poor to be rich in faith, yet you have insulted the poor. These rich Christians are the foolish virgins. They're running around with all their resources in this age. They're the ones who take up all the, they, they peddle the word of God for profit. They reach into the offering and use it for whatever, buy themselves a jet, buy themselves a Mercedes Benz, always reaching into the offering, reaching into the offering, justifying it by talking about I'm prosperous, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the, I, you know what they are? They're the whore. They're the whore that calls himself the bride. Look at this. You want to know what happens to the whore that calls herself the bride? Well, let's look at Babylon the Great. People say, oh, Babylon the Great is wrong. Well, ancient Babylon wasn't Rome, was it? The symbol for ancient Babylon was the lion with the wings of the eagle. And what's the modern day nation with the lion symbol? Great Britain, the UK. What's the modern day nation with the symbol of the eagle? United States. Isn't it strange how those two nations, the United States and the UK, are the lion eagle, and they just happen to be allied together at the end of the age, and so if ancient Babylon was the, was the lion eagle, that means modern day Babylon, the great, Babylon the great, that end time society of people, that's what the word city means. When you look at the word city in the book of Revelation, it talks about the new Jerusalem came down, that city of, of God's people. It it's, what it's really saying is the society of God's people. And a society is different from a city. But there's something wrong in the in the uh, in the in the translation from from Greek to, to English. I forgot. I know I'm going to the Book of Revelation, but I got distracted. And I don't know what I'm. Oh yeah, I'm going to Revelation 17. Look at this whore. Look at her. Look at this whore. The woman on the beast. Hmm. 17:3. The angel carried me away to, in the spirit to a desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names. Now that beast is the government of the Antichrist. And she's riding that thing. She's got her legs around it. Okay, now in juxtaposition to that, we see the bride come riding on a white horse in Revelation 19. Okay, so we got the whore riding a beast. Versus, and then you got the wise virgins, and the, this is the foolish virgins, and the wise virgins are riding the white horse and following Jesus, coming in the clouds. By the way, when I saw the throne of God in heaven, it was in the clouds. I saw blue sky above it, and I saw blue sky below it. And I couldn't actually see the throne. I could see the tops of the golden pillars. But the cloud of smoke was so strong, I couldn't see more than five feet into that cloud. It says, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and the abominations of the earth. The woman was drunk on the blood of the saints and the blood of those who bore the testimony of Jesus. Now, people might say, oh, well, that can't be the, that can't be the foolish version. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It just hasn't come to pass yet. Because the Bible talks about how Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus and, and the blood of Je blood was on Judas' hands and he had blood money, even such that the Pharisees would not receive the, the 30 shekels of silver because it was considered blood money. And, and remember, they're the seed that was sown of the devil into God's field to choke out the faithfulness, fruitfulness of, of the of the wheat. But look what this whore says. First of all, the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones, pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand. So this whore on the beast is rich. But look at what she says. I'm trying to find it. It says somewhere. Oh, here's what's, what it says. 
Give her as much torture and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit as a queen. I am not a widow. In other words, this is those Christians who walk around talking about, I'm the bride of Christ. I'm the head, not the tail. I don't have to experience the sufferings of Christ. I'm blessed. I'm, you know, I'm prosperous. And this is also that group of pre-tribulation teachers who say, I will never mourn. And it says that. Give her as much torture and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit as a queen, I am not a widow, and I will never mourn. Therefore, in one day her plagues will overtake her, death, mourning, and famine. She will be consumed by fire, for mighty is the Lord God who judges her. When the kings of the earth who committed adultery with her share her luxury and see the smoke of her burning, they will weep and mourn over her, terrified at her torment. They will stand far off and cry, woe, woe, to the, to the great city. And I'm going to say the great society of people, O oh Babylon, society of power, in one hour your doom has come. What's that one hour that her doom comes? That's the cry that rings out at midnight. That's the hour of God's judgment. That's nuclear war. So Babylon the Great falls in one hour. And if we look at Revelation 17, 12, look, look what it says. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but for who receive authority as kings one hour along with the beast. And the actual Greek says it that way. Now, my Bible actually reads, The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. Well, there's a misinterpretation. It doesn't say for one hour. The Greek says, who will receive authority as kings one hour along with the beast. So we see the beast comes to power, and those ten horns, those ten kings come to power and receive authority as kings in one hour. We see Babylon the Great falls in one hour. Now let's look at uh, another proof. Revelation 14, fallen, verse 8, fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. Let me go back. I'm sorry. Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship God who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. A second angel followed and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. So the hour of God's judgment is the hour that Babylon the great falls. It's also the hour that the beast comes to power. And then if we go to Revelation 3.10, it says the hour of trial to come upon the whole earth. Okay? Now, it says you will be spared from that, but people try to misinform you and say that's the rapture. It doesn't say you'll be raptured out. It says you'll be spared. There's certain people... Actually, the Lord spoke to me about Bob D'Andrea. He recently passed away. He was the founder of Christian TV or something, Christian TV Network. And a very gentle spirit, just a gentle soul. And um, the Lord spoke to me and said that he's been spared from the hour of God's judgment, which is yet to come. Hallelujah. Now, last thing I have to say is this. As long as you're breathing, you still have time to repent. And um, you can repent of the love of money. People say, I'm willing, I'm willing. Just being willing doesn't crucify your flesh. You've got to be a doer. You've got to be willing and obedient. Okay? Now, hallelujah, hallelujah. That song is still, I mean, this song has been in my spirit for the last three days. I've been everywhere I go. I'm just, hallelujah, come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. All these people who teach a pre-tribulation rapture, they expect the bridegroom to come sooner than he's going to. The Bible says the bridegroom is a long time in coming. 
not going to be pre-trib rapture. This is what Paul was talking about, the powerful delusion in the end of the age, that they loved not the truth, yet delighted in wickedness. So they changed the scriptures to say once saved, always saved, and threw out any verse of scripture they didn't like and said, that's just for the Jews. It's always for someone else. And if you're going to throw scriptures onto other people, God's going to throw them right back onto you because you reap what you sow. In other words, there's people out there who teach that the foolish virgins represent the Jews. It's not true. Because it could have said five were Jews and five were Gentile believers. It doesn't say that. It says five were wise and five were foolish. I'm just saying there's so much false teaching out there that there's no persuading them. You could sit there and show them the scriptures all day long. They're not going to believe it. But when it comes to pass and you see the sign in the sky of the coming of the Son of Man and you realize that's a mushroom cloud from a nuclear strike. And you realize that's where the military base is right over there. And you hear a cry that rings out. And you realize it's doomsday midnight. And you realize, wait a minute, this ain't no pre-trib rapture. And after that nuclear war, there's going to be a time of no wind. And then after that time of no wind, Russia and China and Islam come rising out of the sea. There's one last thing I'm going to show you. Matthew... Uh, Revelation 13. The book of Revelation is four sequences of events. If you don't understand that, you're going to think, how are you going to say this? You're, you're jumbling up the book of Revelation. It's, no, you just don't understand that the book of Revelation is four sequences of events that start and end and start and end. And the, uh, the second coming is found four places in the book of Revelation. It's the seven, seventh trumpet. It's the seventh bowl of God's wrath. It's also found in Revelation 14, verse 1 through 5, and Revelation uh, 19, starting in verse 11. That's the four places. And then if you look at Revelation 14, verse 1 through 5, that's the second coming. When Jesus first uh, lands his feet on the earth, it's on Mount Zion, okay? With his 144,000, that's why they're called the first fruits. They live in the end of the age, but they're the first to return with Jesus. That's why it's called the first will be last. The last will be first. The 144,000 are sealed with the seal of God sometime after nuclear war, sometime possibly before the rapture. Okay. Revelation 13. The mark of the beast comes out. When you see, hold on. Okay. Revelation 13. I saw another beast coming out of the earth. Now, first there was a beast that rises out of the sea. That beast that rises out of the sea has seven heads and ten horns. We know those ten horns are the ten kings who receive authority as kings one hour along with the beast. Okay. Okay. Revelation 13, 1, 2. The beast I saw resembled a leopard. That's Islam. Had feet like a bear. That's Russia. Had the mouth like that of a lion. Now, the lion is Great Britain or English. So there's part of the government of the Antichrist will speak English. So it has a mouth like that of a lion. The English, the Brits. The dragon gave the beast his power and throne and great authority. Now, the dragon is China. The power it gives is economic power. And the throne, this means that when the government of the Antichrist, the beast, is established, the headquarters is most likely going to be in China. And that's actually the first time I've mentioned this revelation. But it says, the dragon, China, gave the beast power. Now we see, what is Russia asking for in Ukraine right now? He's asking China, give us economic, the bear is asking for economic power from the dragon right now in order to continue the war on Ukraine. And Ukraine is one of the ribs that's in the mouth of the bear of Daniel 7. But here it goes. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. <sighs> Boy, that opens a whole new set of stuff here. That's Russia, you guys. Russia was a fatally wound nation. 
It seemed to have disappeared, actually, of Soviet Union. And then Russia came rising up, literally in the last 10 years. Two things that were instrumental for the beast. One, the, the election of, of Obama as president of the United States, where we put a Muslim in the most holy place of the United States. We put the abomination that causes desolation of Islam. And we put that in the highest place of the land. And the second pivotal event that most people don't know is when Edward Snowden in 2011 leaked all that NSA information. Did you know that Edward Snowden had a briefcase full of hard drives and he had access to all the military uh, designs and specifications for nuclear submarines? Hypersonic. Did you know that NASA developed hypersonic flight in 2000 and was, it was testing it in 2007? It was NASA and those hypersonic nukes that Russia has right now, they didn't develop that. It was developed right here in the United States. And Russia for years never had the technology to build a nuclear submarine that had nuclear power until after Edward Snowden. And it wasn't until 2011 when Edward Snowden Ended up in, if at first he went to um, that South America, I want to say uh, Venezuela. Then he went to China with his briefcase. And then he landed in Russia with that briefcase. And, and it was in 2011, about three months after Edward Snowden defected, that Russia started doing flights and being provocative. That the provocations with Russia began. And you know why? Because they opened up. And here's what Here's what happened. If you do your research, you're going to find out this is true. After Edward Snowden leaded, leaked all that technology of hypersonic flight, nuclear reactors that can be contained within a, um, a, a ship or a, a submarine. And also, you'll see that all of a sudden, Russia started developing also certain laser technology. And... Um, Obama cut the funding of all those programs. So Russia was able to take all that research of hypersonic, all that uh, technology of uh, nuclear power, all that technology of, um, la there's laser and stealth technology, and they stole it. And at the same time, and I'm telling you, the Lord spoke to me a prophetic word in 2015 that Obama, Obama was a, was a mole from, I'm telling you. I'm just saying. Obama was like a spy from the start. And Edward Snowden, the technology he leaked to Russia and China was pivotal. Okay, so the beast comes right, right, the second beast comes rising out of the earth. These are happening simultaneously. When the first beast comes rising out of the sea, when Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, and Turkey come invading Babylon the Great, at that same time, you're going to have Black Lives Matter come rising out of the earth. I saw a second beast come, coming out of the earth. So what that means is right here, there's going to be warriors who start fighting on behalf of the beast against the patriots and the saints. Um, he had two horns like a lamb, but spoke like a dragon. Now, the two horns, that's two leaders. Okay. Like a lamb, that means like Christianity, but speaks like a dragon. What in the earth right now is like a lamb, tries to be like a lamb, but speaks like a dragon? It's Islam, folks. He exercised all the authority of the first beast. So there's an alliance there with Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, and Turkey. And um, uh, he made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. Now, anytime you hear the, the modern teachings of Christian leaders who teach on prophecy of the end, they're wrong about everything. They're wrong about the pre-tribulation rapture. All the scholars, they're wrong. They tell you that the rapture happens in Revelation chapter 4 when God says, come up here. But, I mean, I can prove that's not true. He's, they, they omit the fact that Jesus said the seven lampstands represent the church, and then they spend hours teaching that the 24 elders represent the church, and they're omitting what Jesus said in, in Revelation 120. 
They're going to be condemned for that. These end time prophecy teachers. They never mention that Jesus said, and then in Revelation chapter 4, anyway, I don't have time, I made all sorts of videos on this. The rapture does not happen in Revelation chapter 4, but in Revelation 7, 9, this is the first time we see a multitude from every nation, language, tribe, and people before the Lamb of God, before the four living creatures, and the 24 elders are in that scene, Revelation 7, 9, but the lampstands are conspicuously not there. Yet, in Revelation chapter 4 and 5, the lampstands are there. Because the lampstands represent the church. So the rapture doesn't happen in Revelation 4 or 5 because the lampstands are in heaven. But in Revelation 7 9, very conspicuously, the, ramp, the, the, the lampstands are not mentioned. And it's the first time we see a, a multitude from every nation, language, tribe, and people. So the scholars are wrong about everything. And they're going to try to tell you that this uh, wound that had been healed on one of the heads of the beast means that the Antichrist is going to get shot in the head and then he's going to have a false resurrection. They're lying. And proof of that is when, one, it's not a pre-tribulation rapture. Two, that stuff never comes to pass. They tell you that the rider on the white horse of Revelation 6-1 is the Antichrist. That's not going to come to pass either. None of this stuff that the scholars say is going to come to pass. So if you hear me contradicting them, because they're wrong. I'm the one who saw the throne of God, by the way. Boom. I'm the one. And, and I'm not saying that to boast. I'm saying that for credibility. And then look what he does. Um, Revelation 13. And he performed great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of man. You know what? That's a nuclear strike. That's military strike. That's what we see in Ukraine right now. The bear is actually doing that right now, causing fire to come down from heaven in full view of men and, and obliterating, what are they called? Um, hypersonic missiles and thermobarics. That's the fire down from heaven. So that's an interesting thing. The Lord is just now speaking to me that Revelation 13, 13, the beginning fulfillment of that is the thermobaric bombs that Russia is using, the bear is using on Ukraine. And because of the signs, he was given power. Now, because of these bombs that they're able to use, they're given power on behalf of the first beast. He deceived the inhabitants of the earth. He ordered them to set up an image in the honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. And he was given power to give breath to the image of the beast. You know what that is? Video monitors. If you're watching me right now, you're watching an image that was recorded earlier. So what they're going to do, I believe, is uh, when the mark of the beast comes out, they're going to have video monitors. And you're going to have to listen to what their news reports are. You're going to have to, and, and I'm just saying, these are, when it says it gave life to the image, what do you think a video, um, if you watch a news report, you're watching NBC Nightly News, isn't that image, hasn't that come alive? If you watch a recording from uh, two days ago of the news, you're going to see images that are brought to life. Okay? So what I'm saying is this represents video monitors and TV reports. He was given... Uh, power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand, his forehead, or his forehead. Okay? So when it says he, it's talking about the beast. The beast is the collective body of the people of this world, and it includes, first and foremost, Russia, China, China, and the leopard, Islam, okay? The blasphemous names. What does that mean? When it has blasphemous names, well, we see a, a foreshadow of that right now. If you look at, did you know that Nike is a blasphemous name? If you wear Nike shoes, I remember the Lord, the Lord told me, don't wear Nike. He just did, you know? I, I had, I remember I... Now, there's a place where uh, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Okay. I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. Earth and sky fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead. Look, it says a great white throne. Remember when I started this video? I started by telling you what that throne looks like. It's white like this, but it has reflective colors in it like that. I saw it. And look what it says. Everybody's... All right. Well, I can't find the verse of scripture I was looking for. But you know how the, um, oh, here it is. The devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire, Revelation 2010, lake of burning sulfur, and where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. Now, the, the beast, when it says the beast, that's the collective body, just like the Christians are the body of Christ. Well, when it says the beast, it's referring to the collective body of the people of this world who are not saved. Okay? And then it says, and the false prophet. Now, the scholars will all tell you that someday in the future, the Antichrist is going to rise up. He's going um, He's going to be... A boss and he's going to have a right hand man who's a false prophet uh uh that's not what the Lord showed me the false prophet is Muhammad and these people who are thrown into the lake of fire are the body of Islam that's what the Lord told me there ain't going to be no false prophets Islam now the lake of fire is for judgment for those who did not receive their judgment while they were in the earth. Now that's from the book of Enoch. And when uh, the Lord had already told me that. Anyway. Hallelujah. So. Glory to God. Get your Bible out. Make sure you study everything out. And watch. Watch. Here's proof. When everything I say comes to pass exactly as I'm saying, and then everything doesn't come to pass, not a single thing comes to pass that the, that the um, current uh, Bible scholars teach about the book of Revelation. I'm just telling you. And when you see them all condemned, many are called, few are chosen. Now, yesterday... Man, I got on YouTube and I was talking about how um, the Lord spoke to me and told me Ronnie Howard Brown is one of those guys who's turned aside from money, riches, and wealth. And yet in his, um, he is one of the guys of Revelation or Matthew 7, 21, where it says, Lord, Lord, in your name we did many miracles. Same with Kenneth Copeland, Jesse Duplantis, um, Creflo Dollar. And there's many churches all throughout the every city. Every city has multiple churches full of people who are weeds among the wheat. And they're all growing up together. And they're handed over to a powerful delusion and they only find out just moments before the bridegroom comes. They all fall away, miss the bridegroom. And so I put all this stuff up out there on YouTube. You know how offensive that is? And so yesterday... Over the last couple of days, the Lord's given me vision. And I saw a vision, and I had a dream. I had, oh, man. I had like two dreams and one vision that the Lord wanted me to go, guess where? To Rodney Howard Brown's church. Now, <laughs> I don't want to go, especially after putting on YouTube that he's going to fall away. So... I decided, no, Lord. I mean, I really got to know for sure. I don't want to. I don't want to go. I don't want to. Last thing I want to do is go there. But you know what? They're anointed. They have the anointing really strong. So it caused a confusion in me because it's like, Lord. But He says, let them grow up together. 
That's what he says. He said, and, and those people, they did many miracles in Jesus' name. They prophesied in Jesus' name. They drove out demons and they had the anointing. So the Lord's telling me to go to this church and I just, I didn't want to. And I was over there at Burger King and I was eating and the Lord had told me I had one dream, one vision that the Lord was telling me to go to that church. And I have a history. I went to that church like 15 years ago and I got trespassed three different times over a course of five years. And it was never for a moral sin. It was always for, I'd go to the church and I'd get a prophetic word and, I, and the Holy Spirit would be upon me and I would experience hostility in the house of my God. And um, blessed are you when all men persecute you and exclude you and say all manner of evil against you. I mean, I filled all those scriptures while I was going to that church. They didn't like me. Now, 15 years of being away from that church, the Lord's telling me to go. And I wasn't going to do it. I really didn't. I don't have time for being, put myself in a place where I'm just going to be persecuted. I don't have time for that. I don't, I mean, I have a close walk with God. I don't need nobody else's help to have a close walk with God. So I'm over there and I ordered a, um, anyway, I had, I had just ordered a, at Burger King and I'm sitting there with my food in the bag and I walked into the little, uh, dining area and was sitting down to eat. And all of a sudden, I saw, I clearly saw a big angel with a fist, and he goes, boom! Right, it felt like it was right, literally felt like he hit me on top of the head in the spirit realm. And I knew, because I, now I was thinking about eat. I'm thinking about the food. Just before I ordered, I had told the Lord, I'm not going to that church. And then I, I'm, I'm ordering the food. I'm about to eat. And boom, I see this. And then I was like scared. I was like, okay, Lord, I'll go, I'll go. So, I'm, so I go to this church, right? And they want my ID to get in. And I was like, oh, praise God. Because I didn't, I didn't actually, I left my ID. So that gave me a way out. And so I was walking back to the car and who drives by in a golf cart with about well this was an extra long golf cart most golf carts have four seats the driver passenger and two seats facing backward this was one of those ones that had two four six seats ronnie howard brown drives right by me looks like he knows who i am too he probably has seen my videos where i say that He's a part of that group of people who gets condemned. <laughs> he knows. He knows who I am. <laughs> and it was so weird. And I remember seeing him drive by. And he, I mean, he was maybe less than 10 feet away. And uh, it's just so weird to, to be like, have to, to have gotten on YouTube and said publicly, you are not going to make it. Because of the love of money. And surrounding yourself with yes men. So let me tell you the scriptures. Okay. Woe to you who are rich. Jesus said that. He said you've received your comfort. James said that. He said you should take pride in your low position. And you have insulted the poor. I've seen Pastor Ronnie insult the poor all the time. For me personally, I'm poor. But that's because I give literally everything I have. Every... Four or five years, I give away like 90% of what I have. And it's what the Lord tells me to do. I don't want to do it. It's, but he said, you can't even be my disciple unless you give up everything. And all I can do is obey God. And if, 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 if the Lord tells me to give up, like I had to give my van not last year, but the year before. And this van was like, I still miss that van. And when he told me, your relationship with God decreases until you obey. And so in order to keep my closeness and intimacy with God, I obey him. And so when I put stuff out there, and so now, pray for me, you guys, because I feel like Rodney Howe Brown doesn't have to be condemned. Kenneth Copeland doesn't have to be condemned. 
because the gift and the call of God is without repentance. And those Matthew 20, uh, Matthew 7, 21 group where they said, Lord, Lord, in your name we cast out demons. In your name we prophesied. Those were all people who had the gift to call of God and call of God on their life for their entire life. They stepped into the call of God. They were fulfilling the call of God. But in their personal personal spirit, the work of God that comes from the trials that happen when you're poor. Okay, now, like, compare Elijah with King Ahab. Elijah lived in a cave. He was poor. They, uh, look at um, uh, Paul lived in a jail cell. Peter lived in a jail cell. John lived in a jail cell. Being poor makes you have to grow spiritually. And God has always put me in a situation where, I mean, I know I was making, uh, I made something like $15,000 my first month selling cars back in 2001. Now imagine if I had continued selling cars for the last 21 years. Even if my income was half as much, I'd be rich right now. But as soon as I started making a bunch of money, when I was selling on eBay, I was doing 200000 a year in sales, and about half of that was, was profit. In the middle of all that, God tells me to quit. And then I give away a bunch of stuff. I'm just saying, having yes men around you, the Bible says, woe to you when all men speak well of you, but blessed are you when all men speak evil of you and vile things about you and exclude you and persecute you because of me. I've, I experienced that. I experienced um, uh, the prophet is mad because of your many disobediences. That's, I think, in Haggai. Anyway, the point is, the Lord once said to me, you're not a prophet unless you live the way the prophets lived. You're not an apostle unless you live the way the apostles lived. And then in Revelation, it talks about, Revelation chapter 2 or 3, it talks about you have tested those who claim to be apostles and they are not. Well, they might operate in the power of God. They might be anointed. They might be prophets. But if they're living in luxury and self-indulgence, they might call themselves the bride of Christ and the queen of heaven. But they're not going to make it. So there's a difference. They walked in sozo, salvation in this world, but they never inherited eternal life. The foolish virgins, the weeds among the wheat, they're all growing up together. And it's not until the very end of the age. And can we, are we allowed to go root them up? No. Because while you're rooting them up, you may root up the wheat. So that's the job of the angels. Revelation 14, verse 14 through 20, we see the rapture. And the, and the grapes are thrown into the winepress of God's wrath. And that brings me to the parable of the... Um, this was the word for Ronnie Howard Brown, actually. If you know him, send him a link to this video. Tell him, an hour and eight minutes in. God said, I built a vineyard. I put my hedge of protection around it. What's that mean? That means a hedge of protection from God, the angels of God, the Holy Spirit, the power. He says, I also put a watchtower in it. What's the watchtower? Watchtower is where you get a high elevation and it increases your vision. God says, I built a vineyard. I put a watchtower around it. And then he says, when the season came, I sent my, my servants to go collect the fruit. And they persecuted them. Sent them away empty-handed. Now, I can guarantee you, Creflo Dollar has had a prophet sent to him. And Creflo Dollar, his church is a vineyard. And God built a hedge of protection around it. God gave him a watchtower. Ronnie Howard Brown, God, God has blessed and built that ministry. Um... Kenneth Copeland, God has blessed and built that ministry at the expense of your soul and the work that God wanted to do. And now you're risking this end of the age. And so what's going to happen is nuclear war is going to happen. All the money, riches, and wealth are going to be gone. If you don't say the Bible says those who dwell in darkness don't see that day coming. Now, the last thing I'm going to say is this. 
if this nuclear strike happens September 22nd, 23rd, somewhere in there of 2022, this year, that would mean that the Bible scholars are wrong about Daniel's 70th week and that the final seven years began in September 23rd, 2015 with the blood moon tetrad. And remember, in 2017, the woman clothed with the sun. September 23rd, exactly two years later, the woman clothed with the sun. Remember, in 2017, we had um, a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse. All these signs in the sky. And everybody was thinking, the rapture is going to happen any minute, any minute. But if it happens uh, around the end of September 2022... That means the final seven years started in seven in, in 2015 and September 2017 and the counting of the 1,260 days begins and then there's 1,260 days until the two witnesses are put to death for their faith starting at the hour of God's judgment if nuclear war happens on September in, in the end of September that means the final seven years, so it goes the final seven years, and then after that, the final three and a half years, where the beast comes to power and reigns for 42 months. Now, these are all mysteries that I don't know the answer to. Hallelujah. And now, this last part is just speculation, but I'm telling you, if, if nuclear war happens... The end of September this year, 2022, at the end of September, that would mean that the Blood Moon Tetrad in 2015, September 23rd, 2015, marked the beginning of the final seven years. And then at the end of that final seven years, the beast takes over and there's three and a half years left. And no surprise, oh, big surprise, all the scholars were completely wrong. Now, that's speculation on my part as far as the last seven years. But if it does happen September, at the end of September 2022, that would mean the blood moon tetrad was almost exactly seven years seven years ago. And it also means that the, uh, the beast comes to power and tramples on the holy city for 42 months. And the, and the two witnesses are anointed to prophesy 1,260 days. And that begins at the hour of God's judgment when nuclear war happens. And when the ten horns receive authority as kings. And Babylon the Great falls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. See, you never see the false teachers filled with the Holy Spirit like I am. Jesus is Lord. You never hear them say that either when they're teaching their false teaching. You never see them in the middle of their teaching start going, Hallelujah. And Jesus is Lord. Because they can't. Because their, their false teaching is an utterance of false spirits. And they've turned aside for money, riches, and wealth. And then they've been handed over to a powerful delusion because they love not the truth. And they taught a different gospel. They taught the true gospel of grace, which is a once saved, always saved doctrine. And they taught the prosperity gospel, which is a different gospel. And he said, and Paul said, if anybody preaches a different gospel, I don't care if it's an angel or a prophet or whoever it is. He said, may they be eternally condemned. Meanwhile, Paul's living in a jail cell. He's not out there gathering up money, riches, and wealth at the end of the age. Just saying, hallelujah, come on and bless the Lord with me.